there is a word that we hear a lot now, and that word is disruption. And what's interesting about that word disruption is you hear it a lot, particularly in the marketing uh, arena. You know, everyone is disruptive marketing, disruptive campaigns, and all those kinds of things. And really, what it really means is something huge just happened to change the way or the direction uh, that something is going. And uh, I'm excited about today's show because a part of today's show, or really all of today's show, is going to be about disruption. It's going to be about changing things. But the thing that we're talking about changing today is the way that you think, the way that you see things, the way that you see yourself, and ultimately is going to translate into the way that you live your life. Because if you can see it, that's what's going to be. And so I'm excited about today's show. I'm excited about the opportunity uh, to share this information with you. And listen, I'm just expecting just an incredibly dope conversation. That, that's what it's going to be. But I tell you what, before we even get to that, I, I, um, I have a question for you. If you are a business owner or an entrepreneur or someone who is really looking at getting into business, the question is this. Did you know that 75% of people judge a company's legitimacy solely based on aesthetic appearance? I'm talking about the way things look. Well, I'm excited to introduce you to our sponsor, Thing Hat Thing, or THT. They specialize in digital web development and marketing and partnering with small and medium-sized businesses to make sure that you have a stunning digital presence. Now, at THT, they believe digital marketing and all its components should be easy and effective. In other words, their job is to make you look good so you can focus on what you do best, and that's running your business. So if you are ready to take your business image to the next level, contact Thing Hat Thing or THT at THTCreative.com. That's THTCreative.com. And check my people out because it's all about how you look. If you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you can do good. So I'm telling you, THTCreative.com will get you there. So check this out, folks. We are about to start the show. So let's go be disruptive, huh? This is about the journey. Your journey. <laughs> What's your purpose? So I am so excited about my guest today. He is an author. He is a speaker, a corporate speaker. He is an entrepreneur. Uh, and honestly, the brother, the brother is, is, is absolutely inspiring. And when I say that, I'm talking about the knowledge that he drops. I'm talking about the way that he presents to the world and how he chooses to give back, and how he chooses to live his life helping others. And remember, I started the show talking about disruption, right? So my first guest for today is the Mindset Disruptor. His name is Jose Flores. Jose, welcome to the show, my brother. Hey, man. Thank you for having me, brother. How's it going? Oh, man. Living life and loving it. And I am so excited that uh, that that you're here uh, on my big, full, authentic life, man. Let me tell you. So we met in Anaheim, California um, about about a year ago. It was at the Cure SMA conference. And, um, you know, when, you know, it wasn't many people who, who, who were um, of different backgrounds there. So when you saw each other, you kind of recognized and nodded, right? And I saw this brother. I saw this brother. He had like some Gucci sneakers on. He was he was fly. He was absolutely fly. But the thing that I saw him, there was like a light around him, and 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 there was a positivity um, that exuded from him. And I was like, I gotta meet this brother. I gotta see who this is. And lo and behold, his light came to my light. He came up to me. He was like, Hey man, we need to connect. And you know, ever since then, it has just been absolutely dope, man. So. Man, welcome to the show, man. How are things going? Thank you, Lamandre. It was it's great, man. It's great. You know what I mean? It was a pleasure meeting you as well, seeing what you've been doing. 
and how you're growing and expanding. It's just amazing to see, man. So I'm just honored to be here on the show and get to share, you know, a little bit of time with you and your audience. Man, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this show is really about your journey. You know, I, you know, I, 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 I spoke about some of your accolades and some of the things that you have done. As I said, you're a best-selling author. You're a corporate speaker. And you get around. I mean, you travel all over sharing your message with companies and, 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 and different people. But this is not so much about your work as it is about your journey. And so I like to start from the beginning, man. So tell me how it all started, man. Tell me about your childhood growing up. Yeah, man. So, you know, I was uh, born and raised in the Bronx, New York, and uh, I had a great childhood, man. I had a really, really good childhood. I was uh, able to walk and run and ride bike and, you know, just do the, 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 the things that healthy young boys do. And my mom noticed that uh, I had a little limp when I walked and they were all, everybody was like, oh, look at him. He walks like a little tough guy. How cute is he? And then right. when my mom realized that the the, walk, the limp wasn't going away, she got concerned like any parent would. And she took me to the doctors and they wound up running some tests. And, and back, back in the day, they used to do muscle biopsies. So mm -hmm. they did a muscle biopsy on me and uh, they determined that I had mus you know, muscular dystrophy. Um, at first, they had misdiagnosed me with, with Duchenne, but then uh, they, they got the right diagnosis with the spinal muscular atrophy. So... I uh, found out when I was a very young, at a very young age that I had spinal muscular atrophy and there wasn't really a whole lot of information out there, but they told my mom that, you know, that by the age of uh, 15, I'd end up in a wheelchair and they weren't even expecting me to live past my teenage years, right. uh, which thank God that back then they didn't have all the information because uh, the good news is, is that this year I celebrated my 46th birthday. And so right. I'm excited about that because, you know, uh, they counted me out. You know, but I'm still here kicking life's butt and, and making things happen and living life to the full. And so, you know, growing up, like I said, I had a great childhood. And then when I got into high school, fast forward to high school, that's when really things started to get uh, a lot more difficult for me, because that's when I really started to feel uh, the effect of the SMA, uh, which is short for spinal muscular atrophy. That's when I started feeling SMA really start to take its toll on me. So it started started to become more difficult, you know, going from a sitting position to a standing position, getting in and out of my bed, going uh, up the stairs, anything really that went against gravity started to become more difficult for me. Right. Uh, so it was, it was, it was challenging. My high school years were challenging uh, because at that point my leg would give out at me at random moments and uh, I would fall on the floor. I couldn't break the fall. So I can't even tell you how many times I, I bust my head open and had to get stitches. Right. I bust my eye open, had to get stitches. And, uh, but it was, it was embarrassing too. Cause you know, I'm a teenager and you know, it's like, you shouldn't be falling at this stage of the game right? and you know, falling and, 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 you know, going through that embarrassment, it was tough because at that point I was like, you know, I, I, that's when I started like hiding from the world. I mm. was embarrassed. I was ashamed. Uh, and, and I didn't, I, I, I didn't want nobody to know I was disabled. My body wasn't really developing properly. Uh, it was underdeveloped. I was afraid to take my shirt off at the pool or the beach and things like that because right. I, I wasn't like I didn't look like the rest of the kids. So I, I, it was a couple of years where I, I, like I was like a like a turtle in his shed, just hiding from all the right. elements and, and any danger. Right. So um, that was a tough time in my life. And then so from you know fast forward high school, I, I graduated high school. There's a cool story about my graduation day in, in my book. I'm not going to spill the beans, but if you want to hear that, you got to get the book, but it's amazing. <laughs> but, right. Um, fast forward, graduated high school. I moved from uh, New York to Florida. So I'm excited, right? I'm, 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 I'm 22 years old at that point. I'm still able to walk. I'm in a new state, new environment, uh, new opportunities. And I'm like excited because I get to take advantage of these new opportunities and new experiences. And at the age of 22, just a couple of short months after I moved down to Florida, I was, uh, at that time, I used to use a motorized scooter because like I mentioned, my leg had uh, used to give out at me at random moments. So I right. used to use a scooter and I was going from the scooter to my mother's sofa and I'm six foot tall. So taking those few steps from my scooter to my mother's sofa, my leg gave out and I fell down and I broke all the toes in my right foot. Mm. And uh, that was a horrible moment Yeah. because when they try to lift me up, I'm six foot. When they try to lift me up, 
uh, they, they couldn't lift me up and they dropped me right back down on, on that same foot. And that, that same I broke arm with all the toes broken. Wow. So my, my goodness, man. When I tell you uh, a type of pain, a type of pain that's probably unheard of, bro, it was, uh, it, it, it was horrible, man. But at that point, you know, uh, I couldn't even put any weight on my, on the ball of my foot for about right. three to four months. And so what, you know what they say, if you don't use it, you lose you, it. You lose it. And yeah. so after those three or four months when my toes healed up, because you can't put a cast on it, they just have to heal on their own. Um, and I try to stand on my foot, my leg just kept on buckling out from under me. So that's yeah. when re- reality hit for me, Lamandre. That's when reality hit. And I was like, my goodness, this thing is for real. I, I, I'm not going to be able to walk again on my own. And, I, you know, it was a it was a dark, dark moment in my life. It was. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I get that. I want to back up just a little bit though, because I want I want to kind of you know learn what shaped you through that. So when you were first diagnosed with SMA and this news was delivered um, to your family that you probably wouldn't live uh, through your teenage years, what was that like? Number one, for your mom, uh, you know, for your family uh, to, to 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 have that diagnosis and, and that prognosis. Yeah, you know, it was a de- it's devastating news. You know, nobody, no parent wants to hear that that type of news, especially for their child. Right. But you know, my mom was faithful. She she was a believer, and she just you know she believed that you know God had a big plan for my life, and and that's what she stood on. She stood on that on the, on her faith. I mean, because yeah. at the end of the day, that's all she had, right? It was her faith at that point, and so trusting in God and just believing that His plan was greater and that. You know, right. I, we, we were going to push through this and we were going to, uh, you know, overcome this. And now, uh, now, now, as you grew up, man, were you aware of the prognosis? I mean, I know you knew you had spinal muscular atrophy, but did you did you know of, you know, the, the impending demise? Yeah, right. <laughs> the death sentence that was given down. Right. Right. I didn't, I didn't know. My mom didn't tell me that at a young age because she didn't want that to affect my, my, my thought process. But, you know, as I got older. You know, probably I would say like late middle school, early high school. That's when she kind of like shared that news with me because I was obviously getting closer to 19. But right. then at that point also, there was new uh, there was new uh, information that was out as well. And then we started learning that there was different types of SMA. And 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 I had, thank God, the, one of the more mild forms. I'm type three, which is uh, non life threatening. And right. it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect my breathing and my respiratory system or anything like that. And the muscles surrounding that. So. Uh, they said that I can live a normal life at that point, which was yeah. which was great news, right? This was like in high school, but yeah. at that point, like I, I never had like a larger vision for myself. I didn't, I, I wasn't thinking about college, I wasn't thinking about a career, I wasn't thinking about thinking about the future because I was in survival mode, right? I just yeah, that's I, what I, was, I was I was just about to ask you. So why didn't you? Because usually, you know, at that time, everybody is forecasting for the future. You know, I, I want to be. You know, I want to be the next Bobby Brown. Yes, that tells you how old I am, man. I'm about fifty. I said Bobby Brown. You know, because at that time that was the that was the man. So you know, so so usually during those years, that's when you're projecting what you want to be in the world. Why was it that you were stuck in survival? What was that about? Yeah, because I didn't know what was going to happen. I, I didn't know no. what was going to happen. I didn't know what to expect. I just knew that I was, you know, graduating high school and, and I already felt this thing kicking in hardcore. And I was basically just trying to hold on to as much hope as I possibly could. I've right. always been an outgoing kid. I've always had a positive attitude, a positive mindset. But, you know, as I got, as this condition started to really take its toll on me, I, I started losing hope. My mm. life started my life started to dwindle away, man. That, that spark that I had started to dwindle away because now I'm, 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 I'm approaching young manhood, right? I'm approaching uh, being a man and, and I'm like, what am I going to do? Right. So uh, fast forward again, like I said, I moved to Florida. I lose my ability to walk. That's when I was really like, Oh my goodness, this thing is for real, for real. And uh, what, what am I going to do? Am I, and I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm going to have to live with my parents for the rest of my life. Right. I'm thinking about if a woman is ever going to love me like this. I'm thinking about if I'm ever going to be able to have children, you right. know, work a job, drive a car again, because I used to drive on my own uh, mm-hmm. when I was a teenager. And just all of these thoughts, like thinking like, I'm going to have to depend on everybody for everything. And so, you know, you almost start to lose your sense of dignity almost. Mm. And you start to lose hope and you start to like really have to depend, like going from being 
independent to now being dependent fully on other people for the majority of the things you have to do, it wasn't an easy transition for me. Of course and, not. You know, it wasn't an easy transition. But, you know, like I said, I, I had my faith as well. And I always had that 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 never give up mentality. And so right. I knew that no matter what would happen, I was not going to give up. I was not going to let uh, this condition, spinal muscular atrophy, uh, determine the type of life that I was going to be able to live because I lived, right. like I said, in hiding, I lived in embarrassment and shame and, and, and shame and, and, and in shame for so many years. And, it, and, and it wasn't really until like, I would say my late twenties, early thirties, where I made a decision and I said, I'm not going to let this wheelchair defeat me. I'm not going to let this wheelchair define me. And I'm not going to let this wheelchair dictate my destiny. Right, and that's when I really started to live, my, like, really step outside of the, my comfort zone and start living life to the fullest. Where right. I would take my shirt off now and I go to the beach, and I thought I was the man. Like, ain't so nobody doing gonna, it. Huh? <laughs> you know. So let me ask this question, man. So, w the move from Florida. Did you move with your family, or was that a solo move? Actually, I mean, the move to Florida. Moved, I'm sorry. Yeah, my family moved down here first, so I lived in okay. New York for a whole year on my own. Okay. Before before making the move down here. And so, you know, I'm a mama's boy and I moved down and, 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 uh, at first I was just coming down for a visit, but then when I moved down here and I saw how beautiful Florida is, I was like, oh man, I could, I could see myself living here. So yeah. I just made the transition and, you know, we own two homes. We own the home down here and we own the home in New York. So at, at some point they were going to sell the home in New York. So I, I had to figure out what I wanted to do. So I was like, man, right. I'm just going to move to Florida. Yeah. No, nah, that makes sense. So let's fast forward just a little bit. Now you said... You know, at that time, even when you, when you moved down to Florida, you were still hiding. You were still in a shell. And you talked about what, you know, you talked about that you made a decision to make a change. I want to talk about that dark place for a moment. I want to talk about that shell. Now, obviously, you know, people, people would naturally assume that it was because of the disability. It was because of the spinal muscular atrophy that it was there, and and that still could be the case. But tell me about not why you were in the show, but what was that like? And the reason that I want to focus on that is because there are people that are watching this, that are listening to this right now, who they're in the show. They don't have a disability, but they have something that has caused them to hide. They have something that makes them keep their shirt on. They have something that makes them not look to the future, but just sit in that survival mode, what was that place like for you? You know, getting to that place obviously had a lot to do with the SMA. I was always like questioning God, like why me, right? The question mm. that many people have, like why me? Why is this happening to me? What did I do to deserve this? This shouldn't be happening to me. This isn't the life that I'm supposed to be living. This isn't fair, you know, going down that kind of rabbit hole. And, but in, in, in the dark place, man, it was like, I never, th I thank God I never had any suicidal thoughts, but I was like, God, if this right. is how I have to live, I don't want to live like this. Take mm. me home. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, man. And you know I what? That... Like, <sighs> Go ahead. I was like, God, I don't, I don't want to live like this. If this is how, if this is the plan you have for my life, I don't want to have to do this. Like, this is too hard. I, I just take, I'd rather you just take me home. Let me be in heaven. And, and, and I don't have to deal with this ever again. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I used to try to, I used to try to like bargain with God, like, God, if you heal me, I'll try, I promise you I'll travel the world. And no, no, I, I, I listen, man, let me tell you, <laughs> our, our stories are so similar, uh, in, in that regard, because I too have spinal muscular atrophy. I have type two and my mother was given a very similar uh, prognosis, except it was that I wouldn't live to be five. And, uh, you know, the truth is I'm, I'm a little bit older than you, not much, but, uh, but a little bit older. Uh, but in those few years, um, you know, some advances were made, but, but, but the truth is I always knew about the prognosis because I was dragged to every prayer and healing, <laughs> healing <laughs> session and revival in the world. I feel like whole ministries were built on trying to, trying to heal me, trying to snatch me out of the chair. And, uh, and when I didn't walk right in front of them. You know, it's because my faith wasn't strong enough. I'm nine. I believe that I could fly around the house. What do you mean my faith isn't strong enough? But 
nonetheless, that's that's what was done. And and and, and here's the thing, man. I, I I am with you in that. I believe my mother and and my family, they were the ones who helped me to realize that it didn't matter what other folks said. It didn't matter how other people perceived my condition. The truth was, I have value, and that mm. my job was to keep giving that value in spite mm. of what anybody else said, thought, or believed would be my outcome. And when I was done, I would go. But up until that mm. point, I still had work to do. So my job was to focus in on that. And here's the mm. thing. You said something very key. But at one point, at some point, you made a decision. What was that decision, Jose? Yeah, it was the decision to, to you know, I was like, you know what? I, I came to grips with, with, with SMA and, you know, the Bible says, you know, Paul says, you know, be content in all, in all things. And I heard this one preacher say one time, he said, you know, when Paul's talking about being content, that doesn't mean that you don't stop contending. Ah. And I said, well, that's powerful. I said, you know what? I'm content, but I'm contending, which means that I'm still fighting. I'm still pushing forward. I'm not going to let this hold me back. So even though I, 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 I accept it and, and I'm content with it, that doesn't mean that I stop. I, I let it take, I let it consume me and take and take full control over me. Right. And so that was a huge statement that made an impact on my life because I was like, wow, I can still have this, but still keep fighting and still keep living a great life. And it's so amazing, uh, Lamandre, you know, when you start to understand how powerful the mind really is. And, you know, my family was the same way. My family was supportive. My family was like, you have value. And there's one thing hearing it from your family and your loved ones, but it's one thing uh, to believe that when you're actually going through the storm. Yeah. Right. It's, it's easier said that, than done type of thing. And we're human, right? We, we, sometimes we, we're emotional beings. We let our emotions get the best of us. We let our thoughts, you know, go, go rampant in our minds. And I like to say that, you know, <laughs> You know, I'm in a physical wheelchair, but how many people are physically able, but they're still sitting in their thoughts, mm. right? they're sitting in their thoughts, they're sitting and, 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 the, and their stories that they're telling themselves over and over and over. And so in that dark place, man, I felt defeated. I felt unworthy. I felt uh, incapable. And I, I, I felt like I wasn't like worth the, the, being the man that God had created me to be because, you know, what kind of man is like in a wheelchair, can't really do nothing physically, can't take care of himself, let alone anyone else. And again, that's just a part of the story that, you know, I was telling myself, I, I had yeah. a, I had a, I had a self sabotaging story uh, and, and, and agenda. And, you know, the enemy, uh, the devil wasn't, uh, what was in uh, helping, you know, he, he was loving that. He was loving when I was in that position, right? Because, right, because it's a lie. It, it was a lie. You were repeating Absolutely. and believing the lie. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, f fast forward, you know, now, now I'm starting to realize how powerful my mind is. I'm starting to read more books. I'm starting to learn more things. I'm starting to surround myself with some different type of people. And that's really when the shift happened. That's what was it that, what, but what was it that caused you to start reading, what was it that caused that flip of the switch? Like, what, what, what? Because if you go from a place of I'm in darkness to then a flip, a swip, a switch flipping, there was a reason for that. What was the thing that caused that switch to flip? So you know, when I moved to Florida, Lamondre, I, 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 I didn't know anybody. I didn't have really any family. I didn't have a, a vehicle to get around with anymore. So I would go to church with my mom just to get mm -hmm. out the house. I would go to church with my mom just to get out the house. I grew up Catholic, so you know I, I, I became born again at 15 because my mom was like, "Your mom." She took me to a Benny Hinn crusade, and she was hoping for the healing. And we went to a Benny Hill Hinn crusade, and and nothing happened. And you know, SMA was still here, and it was like, "Man, God, like I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to believe, I want to believe, but like, what, what's good? Like, I need, I need your help. I need a sign or something." So I would just go to church with my mom just to get out the house. Little did I know that that's where God was going to start His work in me, right? You know, through, through the pastor, and 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 you know, thank God for the pastor that I was under because you know, like you, they they would say like, "Man, if you're not healed, it's because of your faith." Right? right, you're not you're not faithful enough. You right. need to press in more. You need to start believing more, which was another lie, right? And I get people's intentions, but just because they had good intentions doesn't mean that it was what was supposed to be happening for me. Right, and you can't you can't you can't force the hand of God, right? So then it went from that thought process to, 
oh, well, you know, people in the Bible were cursed because, you know, of what their ancestors did. And then maybe they'd be paying the price because of that. And so I had that mindset for a long time. Like, man, like who in my family did something they weren't supposed to that I'm paying for? Why am I carrying this curse? Right. Exactly. Carrying the curse. Exactly. And so I had that mindset for a while. And then it wasn't until, you know, God started developing me and I started understanding that, you know, the curse ended with Jesus and his work at the cross. You know, that's when the curse was, was, was conquered. Mm -hmm. And so I, I didn't, I didn't have to carry that burden with me anymore. And that was another defining moment in my life because I was carrying that burden, right. Mentally and spiritually, emotionally, like who am I paying? Who's debt am I paying for? And then understanding that the curse was conquered at the cross, that was a weight lifted up off of me as well, because now I was able to live in freedom knowing that, you know what, some things we don't, some things that happen to us in life, we don't know the reason why, right? We don't right. know why God created us with SMA or allowed SMA to uh, run in our bodies. But, you know, we got to believe in the word where it says that his plan is greater than our plan and his way is greater than our way. And, you know, again, learning that for some people watching this, they may not understand the depthness of that. But that's what started me uh, with reading, right? Reading the word of God and learning. I really wanted to learn. Right. Like I wanted to learn about this God who was sovereign and this God who was loving. Yeah. And this God who created us in his perfect image. Because for so many years, I was like, man, God, if this is your definition of perfect, man, and you messed up somewhere along the line. <laughs> right. right? But, but understanding those concepts, right? And I know that maybe some people listening to this, you may be struggling with faith and 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 and, and what we're talking about as well. But this was my experience. This was my journey. And so me going through that process and learning about who God is and 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 His plan for my life and His purpose for my life. So many adults, whether you have a disability or not, struggle with finding what their purpose is. Right. And I can tell you this: that whether you're a believer or not, or whether you have a disability or not, that when you find what your purpose is in life, your whole life will change dramatically. And, and see, into that, a, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, going mm-hmm. into a direction that you never dreamed possible. And I'm saying this from experience. This isn't something I heard or a movie I saw or a TV show. I'm telling you from experience that those limiting beliefs that I had, those self-sabotaging beliefs that I had, those lies that I was believing, the stories that I was telling myself, those were the things that were holding me captive, right? That was my real disability. It wasn't SMA. It was my thinking. It was my mind. It was the stories. It was the lies that I believed from the devil. It was the lies that I believed from other people telling me that you weren't going to be amount to anything. It was those stories that I was believing in. And once I stopped believing in that and started to write a new story, a new chapter, I'm telling you, that's when my life changed. So if you're listening, if you're out there and you're listening to this and maybe you're at a crossroads and you're trying to figure life out and you're asking those questions, why? And you're asking, why me? Why am I going through this? I just want to encourage you and let you know to stay the course. Stay the course because God's plan is higher than your plan. Whatever plan you may have had for yourself, whatever vision of your future you may have had for yourself, God has so many more greater things in in store for you. And again, I'm speaking from experience because I grew up in the Bronx, New York. You know, you want to talk about hood, you want to talk about ghetto, you talk about the projects and drug infested and prostitution and gangs. That's where I, that's the environment. That's where I was born into. I was born into that environment. And so you hear a lot of times people say, I'm a product of my environment. I'm a product of my environment. And the only reason they're saying that is because their mind hasn't been expanded to expand outside of that environment. And so once your mind gets to a certain level of expansion, that you know that this isn't all there is. Like there, there, it wasn't just the Bronx, New York. Like I was like, oh wow, Florida, Florida is amazing. Oh wow, oh this international states where you have to fly and take boats to, like Europe and Caribbean and Canada and all of these different places. Like there's no lack of abundance on this planet. There's no lack of resources. There's no there's no scarcity. We 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 serve a God of abundance, and there's there's no shortage, guys. There's no shortage, and we grow up like that, right? And it's because You know, we get programmed because of our environment. We get programmed from our parents. Like I just did a a, a talk uh, not too long ago for an organization. And I I was like, how many of you heard your parents say, turn the light off because you're wasting electricity? Like turn, close the door because you're wasting air. It's not being wasted. It's available. It's there, right? There's no shortage of it. And so when you can, again, change your mind, you know, have a paradigm shifting of your thinking and and start to think beyond your, your, your condition. 
right? It, things will change for you. Your life can change. Your thinking changes. And I, and I like to say this, one of my mentors, and then I'll, I'll let you ask a question or make a comment, Lamandre. But I like one of my mentors, Tim Grover, if you don't know who he is, he was in that, 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 that Netflix documentary, The Last Dance with Michael Jordan. He was Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade's personal coach. He's a personal friend of mine and a mentor to me. And he said that Jose is the definition of overcoming, right? He's the definition of overcoming, of grinding. He was like, because when the mind decides, everything else follows. And that's such a true statement, whether it's positive or negative, but when the mind decides, everything else follows, everything else falls into place. So if you think that you're not gonna have a great life and you're not gonna be successful and things aren't gonna happen for you, then guess what? Those things are gonna happen. But if you think the contrary and you think that, man, life, there's no limit, right? I asked the manager earlier, I was like, how you doing? He said, man, I'm living unlimited. I love that. I'm going to start using that, right? So when you start thinking and you start speaking those things into existence, because listen, uh, my favorite book says, as a man thinketh, so he becomes, right? So whatever you're thinking, whatever you're speaking is going to become your reality. So if you want to start start seeing things change in your life, start, change, start changing how you're thinking, start changing what you're speaking, the words that are coming out of your mouth. And, 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 and listen, I get it. We're human. Sometimes we have our moments. We have our days. I have them too. I'm, I'm like my mentor, Les Brown, who's the greatest motivational speaker to walk the planet. He calls me the motivator to the motivators, which is a great, which, which is a, which is a great um, title to be given right from the goat himself. Right. Absolutely. The reality the is, is that I have my days, right? Where I feel unmotivated, where I feel un, un, uninspired and, and I'm in my own little pity party and I'm, I'm, I'm like, woe is me. But I've learned that it's okay to have those moments, but just to be sure that those things, that you only allow those to be moments in your life. Because what happens is, is it's like a cancer. You let those moments turn into days and those days turn into weeks and those weeks into months and those months into years. And then you, next thing you know, you're spiraling down a, a, a black hole right? A dark hole that's so hard to climb out of. So when you can increase your level of awareness and start recognizing like, wait a minute, why am I thinking like this? Why am I having these feelings? Why am I feeling these feelings? And you can recognize them immediately. The faster you can recognize them, the faster you can snap out of it. Um, so I just want to encourage you, man. I know that was a long-winded uh, no, answer. No, 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 brother. Let me tell you something, bro. I, listen, I'm sitting at your feet and learning and I'm going to tell you why, man, because I, I I hear that. I hear that. I feel that I live that every single day of my life. And for you, it was your faith that flipped the switch. It was your faith. It was your pursuit of truth. It was your pursuit of understanding. It was your pursuit really of purpose That's that right. led you to flip that switch. And, and here's the thing. I know that there are people out here that don't necessarily follow any particular faith or belief in terms of in terms of spirituality but let me tell you something you do follow a belief even if that is a belief of what you believe about yourself or what you believe about the world or how you've been indoctrinated to believe that you are to be so your life is based on belief and you said something else jose and and and, and i like to say it this way your success is your own fault. I heard a speaker say that before. He said, your success is your own own fault. Now, he cursed because, you know, he used some, some explicatives, but still yet, the message got through. In other words, what you believe about yourself, what you believe about the world that you live in and your abilities to affect that world is what creates your world, is what creates your, your existence because your beliefs they create behaviors. Those behaviors create patterns. Those patterns become habits. And those habits, they become outcomes. And so mm -hmm. when he said he was questioning, what kind of a man am I going to be in this chair? Not able to do X, Y, Z. The truth is the chair had nothing to do with that belief. What it was was really, who am I? And what is my contribution? What am I going to be able to do in this world? This is about living an impactful, purposeful life. And what you heard was a masterful dissertation about how he overcame that. And you also heard an encouragement in there. And hopefully you identified. My hope is that as we were speaking about this, as he was talking about it, that you saw yourself. What is the prison that you're trapped in? regardless of physical ability or financial situations, what is it that you are believing about yourself 
that you've learned over and over and over again that it's a lie, but it's still affecting how you behave. Let's flip that switch. Let's get to purpose. And here's the thing. It's not about always being up. It's not always about, I walk into the room and there's sunshine and unicorns and, 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 and flying mushrooms all over the place every day, 24 hours. Guess what? We're human. We all deal with negative thoughts. We all deal with struggles. We all deal with challenges. We all deal with resistance. But it's about how you deal with it. It's about how long you let it linger. Because whatever you have around you, it's going to become a part of your world. That's right. So how do we do those things? And, and 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 this is what's so beautiful, man. So you were in that place, you 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 really latched on to faith, and that faith helped you to change your beliefs about yourself. Then you decided that you would help others make the switch. Tell me about what you're doing now, man. Yeah, man. So I had a uh I have I had a 20 year corporate America background, right? And I worked in corporate America for many years. And again, it's because I thought that's all I would be good at doing, you know? Give me a keyboard on my lap, give me a computer and a mouse and a headset, and I can I, and I can make some money. Um, but again, that was a small vision that I had for myself. And it wasn't until um just a just a couple years ago, you know, just a couple years ago where I was sitting at my desk at my corporate job and I was thinking to myself, and I was like, man. This isn't fulfilling anymore. I'm not satisfied doing this anymore. Like I, I said, I, I already started reading books and I was getting informed and getting information. And I'm like, there's more that I can be doing out in the world than just running the rat race, basically, right? Nine to five. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you're passionate about and that's what you love to do, then I'd say go, I'd say go for it every time. But for me, there was just something inside of me that knew that uh, I wasn't functioning at my fullest potential. And so I said, well, you know, I was always focusing on the things that I couldn't do in life, right? You can't walk, you can't stand, you can't put, pick your arms above your head, you can't move, right? And I was always focusing on, the, on, on what I couldn't do. And it wasn't until I had to ask myself the hard question, right? Like, well, we already know what you can't do, Jose, what can you do? And so when I asked myself that question, I said, well, I still have a powerful mind and I still have a powerful voice what can I do to use those two things and still make an impact and an income? And that's when I just literally Googled, I was at work sitting at my desk on a, on a break and I Googled and YouTube motivational speaking. And that was the beginning of me going down a rabbit hole of personal development, like finding all of these amazing speakers, listening to their stories, listening to their delivery, studying them, practicing on my own. And I'm like, if these guys, are not in wheelchairs and all they're using is their brain and their voice and they're making millions of dollars and impacting the world and be able to not only provide for themselves and their family, but for generations to come, then I can do the same thing. And so I went on, on this journey of personal development and really finding out uh, who I was and really finding my own voice, right? Because we all have a, uh, energy signature and we all have a, a unique voice. And so finding my voice, finding my style and finding, uh, you know, increasing my gifting, that's when I, I, I came across the greats like the Les Browns and the Tony Robbins and the John Maxwells and the Eric Tom and the E.T., the hip hop preacher, Pinky Johnson and, and all of these different speakers. And I'm like, these guys are really out there doing their thing and they're just using their mind and their voice. And I was like, I have a great story. I have a powerful mind and I have a powerful voice and I'm gonna figure out a way to maximize it. And so that's when I just started, you know, attending conferences, going to seminars, you know, watching all the YouTube videos, following the social media of all of these guys. And literally I, I my life and my mind got consumed with it so much so. And that's how you know when you're functioning in purpose is that when you find something that that you feel so passionate about and that you can't get enough of, that's probably uh, an indication of where your purpose lies. Right. And so when you, when you can't get enough of it, when you wake up and you can't stop thinking about it and you wake up and you try to do everything you can to make it happen, that's what purpose smells like. That's mm. what purpose looks like. So if you're, if you're having a hard time finding what your purpose is, you know, I'm, I'm giving you some hints, right? Some clues, because I like to say that success leaves clues. And so follow the people that are already are, are already at a level that you want to get to. 
Follow people that are already doing things that you want to do, but you're not doing yet. Follow those people. And then that will help to transform your thinking. That will help to build strategies in your own life that will help you get closer and closer to living the life of your dreams. Because the reality is, is that if you ask anybody that's in the hood in the ghetto, can I, if I bring you out of here and take you to a mansion in Beverly Hills, do you want to go there or do you want to stay here? Nobody hmm. in their right mind is going to say, I want to stay right here. Nobody right. is because the reality is, is that we all have a bigger dream uh, than the dream that we're dreaming. We all have a bigger vision for ourselves. And sometimes that light gets duffed out, right? That spark gets duffed out. Those dreams get lost in, 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 in the struggle. Those dreams get lost in the challenges. But when you can get around the right people, start to develop your thinking patterns and, and start thinking differently, then you'll be able to start moving the needle forward, even if it's just a little bit. And I always like to say this, if you move that needle forward just 1% every day, just 1% every day in one year, you would have moved that needle 365%. Absolutely. That's a, that's a huge increase. If you look at businesses that increase their profits 365%, those are huge margins. So if you can develop that mindset that says, every day I'm going to do something, every day I'm going to do a little bit, more than what I did the day before, you'll start to see strides in your life. You'll start to see uh, changes happening. You'll start to see that you start to move a different way. You start to see that you start to speak differently. You start mm -hmm. to have a desire to hang around different type of people because now you, you're exposing yourself to something different. You're exposing yourself to something greater than yourself. And I'm telling you when, you, when you start to get involved in that type of environment, that type of thinking and hanging around those type of people, you start to understand really like, wow. Like, you know, when I was growing up, I don't even think there was anybody in my neighborhood that was making six figures, right? right. Let, alone, let, alone, let alone millionaires. But now I'm able to rub shoulders, man, with millionaires and billionaires, Lamondre, literally right. billionaires that I have them, their information in my phone. We call, we text each other and they're mentors of mine. And who would have thought a little old boy from the Bronx, New York, Puerto Rican kid with SMA, who thought that this type of lifestyle was absolutely impossible to achieve, right. impossible to reach. Like I wasn't qualified enough to live this type of lifestyle that I would be living this type of lifestyle. It's, it's mind blowing. I wake up every morning and it's so surreal. I feel like I'm, I'm like, I'm in a dream. And the reality is, it's because I'm living my dream. Absolutely. You are living it out. And I will tell you, who would have thought it? <laughs> Your purpose? You were purposed to do that. You belong in the room. And I think that that is a message that so many people need to hear is that you belong in the room. You belong in the room. Your life will be whatever you believe it will be. That's right. Because... You know, as 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 Jose said, my favorite book, <laughs> my favorite book also tells me that faith without works is dead. So in other words, if you believe a thing, you're going to be willing to put work behind it. There will be That's corresponding right. actions that yield the result that your faith believed for in the first place. And so this is what we're talking about. You heard him say that he did the digging. He started doing the research. He started looking for people who were doing what he wanted to do at a level that he wanted to do it at. And that's what he started to model himself after. And he said, his mentor is the goat, Les Brown. Listen, Les has been my man since I was nine years old and I saw his PBS special. I've never met him. I've never met him, but I am one of those. I am one of his sons from afar. You know, and I, I don't want to get in no trouble. So, no, I'm, I'm literally talking about figuratively here, okay? Uh, let me, let, let's be clear. But I absolutely love that man, and I admire his tenacity, and I model, I model his, I model his guts. I model his moxie. I love the fact that he's confident when he stands. And I see that in you. I can tell that he's definitely... Um, a major influence in your life. And what's beautiful about this, you see the fruits that are being produced uh, from those relationships. Like you're a best selling author. What's the name of your book again? Don't Allow Your Struggle to Become Your Standard? That's right. It's called Don't Let Your Struggle Become Your Standard. And uh, who, by the way, Les Brown wrote the forward to as well. So 
it goes to show you, you know, if you want to be the best, you got to learn from the best. And then you just got to go after it like never before. Absolutely. Absolutely. And now you're also, in addition to all the speaking and, and, and writing, you're teaching a master class. Tell us about That's your right. master class, man. That's right. That's right. So I have a book writing master class uh, that I teach once a quarter. In the beginning of every quarter, we take the journey. And uh, I literally show people uh, what it takes from A to Z to become a, a published author and a number one best selling author. All right. Because there's, especially with Amazon, right? In order for you to make the bestseller status, you have to be the top 100 uh, on a daily basis, right? So, and that's a huge feat because with Amazon, we know that there's millions of people publishing books every day, or at least hundreds of thousands of people publishing books every single day. So for you to make the top 100, let alone number one, speaks volumes. Right. So, you know, I teach people what they what it takes because I, I know a lot of people ask me, like, what was the hardest part about writing a book? And I was like, just getting started. I, you don't mm. know what you don't know. And then you don't even know that you don't know it unless somebody tells you. So right. there's so much there's so much information we don't have because we don't know. We right. don't know the information that's out there. So that's what sparked my passion for reading and writing, right? Because there's so much, there's a plethora of information and knowledge and wisdom in books. And so again, if you if, if you if you if you have a passion for something, buy the books on Amazon, buy the audio books. If you can't flip a page, then listen to the audio, right? That there, there, there's 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 I always like to say, like one of my favorite uh, rappers, Andy Mino, he's like, you can make moves or make excuses, right? Right. But the, choice, the choice is yours. And so right. where, where, where there seems to be no way, you have to either figure out a way or you create a way. And and, and that's, the th that's the way I live my life. And so I'm, I'm like, literally, like, I love when you said that. And I'm going to incorporate that, Lamangia. I thank you for that. Because when people ask me how you're doing, I'm saying I'm living unlimited, baby, because I am. Nothing's going to stop me. And so, again, that's a part of language, right? You're using that type of language. And, and there may be days where you don't believe you're feeling unlimited, but you know what? You say it anyway. And right. you keep saying it. And you keep saying it. And you keep saying it. Because the same way you believe that story, of, uh, uh, that you believe those stories of those people who told you you'll never be anything, and you believe those stories of those people who said you're never going to make it and you're never going to get out the hood, if you start speaking life into your life and positivity in your life, guess what? You'll start believing it. You'll Absolutely. Start it. So and you once you gotta, start believing it, it'll manifest. That's right. You got to flip the script. You got to flip the switch. Like, like Amandre said, you got to flip the switch. And so, you know, at the end of the day, Amandre, it's all about mindset. And this is the type of stuff I love talking about, because if I can help just one people, right, one person or a few people with, with me, I'm actually doing, I, I impact and I get to help hundreds of thousands of people uh, disrupt their mindsets. Because again, if you want to get started on a path to growth, you want to get started on a path to success, you're going to need to change the way you're thinking, right? You have to change the way that you're thinking and you have to change the way that you're speaking. And it starts right there because everything starts and ends in the mind. You ever talk yourself into something right in your head, you're pumping yourself up like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh yeah, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. And then 10 seconds later, you talk yourself right back out of it and you never do right. it, right? You didn't tell anybody about it. You didn't speak the, uh, the words audibly. You thought about it. It was a thought in your mind that you talked yourself into. And then seconds later, you talked yourself out of it for whatever reason. Maybe it was fear, low confidence, whatever the case may be. But everything starts and ends in the mind. And from mm -hmm. there, it manifests itself. Because like Lamanje broke it down earlier, right? Our thoughts become things. And our things, things become actions and behaviors. And then those actions and behaviors turn into right patterns. And those patterns turn into what, what our life is going to look like. At the end of the day, I like to say that you'll only reach the level of success that you're willing to work for. You're only going to reach the level of success that you are willing to work for. So if you want it, you got to work for it. Absolutely. So Jose, in the last last few minutes that, that we're sharing here, and this, is, this has been a great conversation, bro. I am... I am man, I'm hot. <laughs> I'm hot. You oh, know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you, man. But, but before you get into that, I just wanted to end it with that last question about the book writing masterclass. If you yeah. feel like you have a story in you, which everybody does, I believe everybody on this planet should become authors because we all have a story. We all have been through experiences that can help the next person. So if that's something that you're interested in and you want to get involved with, you can check it out at uh, bookwritingclass.joseinspires.com. It's bookwritingclass. Uh, dot joseinspires.com or you can just go to my website joseinspires.com it's all there as well um, and i want to help take this journey with you i want to help you pull i want to help extract 
those stories that you have in your life, those experience. I want to help develop your story and I want to help you become a number one best-selling author. So if that's you and you're ready to take the plunge, go ahead and check out the website and I'll meet you inside. And we do have the, uh, we do have the information uh, for the website scrolling there. And it will also put the uh, direct link uh, in the show notes. So you'll be able to get all the information about the masterclass. You'll be able to get all the information about how you can connect um, with Jose, the mindset disruptor. So it's, it's, uh, it's amazing, man. So as I said, in, in, as we're, as we're coming down to a close, if you could just think of, or if you had the opportunity just to say something to someone um, who, who, you know, may not be in the same situation, but they're looking for purpose and they're, and they're looking for a way to disrupt the patterns, the negative patterns that have been going on in their heads and the beliefs that they've held on to that are, that, that are not serving them, what would you say to them? You know, I would say exactly that. You know, if you have anything that's not serving you, if you have anything that's not adding value to your life, I would say to cut it loose, to cut it loose because you just, you're going to just be dragging it. It becomes dead weight and you want to be as free as possible. So that starts with cutting out, cutting off the loose ends, cutting off the dead weight, and letting all that negativity and all of those thinking, thinking, I like to say stinking, thinking, let all of that go and start to fill your mind with positivity, start to fill your mind minds with things that are going to make you happy, that are going to make you passionate, that are going to give you purpose and, 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 and spark a desire in your life to want to learn more, do more and become more. Those are the three pillars of my life. And I stand by them. I stand on them because I'm always constantly, because the reality is, is that the more you learn, right? The more you become and the more you become, the more you do, right? So you can learn more, do more and become, and become more. And so if you can, if you can stand on that same, on that, on those same pillars, your life is going to change dramatically. And so like Lamarjay said, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know, you know, what environment you're in, what, what background you have. Uh, and, and, it, and to be honest with you, it really doesn't matter because this is what I do know. And when you put your mind to it and your mind and you make a decision and your mind is made up, everything else will fall in line because now your subconscious and we didn't even get into this, but your subconscious mind is like a sponge. It soaks up everything that's spoken and it also captures the unspoken, which is the thoughts that you're thinking, right? The stories that you're telling yourself. So you have the power this day, right now, this very right moment, watching this interview to make a decision just like I did the same way Lamandre did. We made a decision to live life unlimited and the same way we did it. And we're taking the action steps that we need to take to ensure that we're living an unlimited life. You can do the same thing. And I want to let you know, just like he said, you know, he's uh, Les, Brown, Les Brown's son from afar. I want to let you know that I'm rooting for you and I'm cheering from you from afar. And I may not know you, but I know that you have what it takes to make it happen. And I know that you have what it takes to live the life of your dreams. And I know that you have it, what it takes to keep on passing the baton, right? Because at the end of the day, I'm doing all of this so that when I die, I die empty because I know I lived a full life and that, and that I get to leave a legacy. And, and that's, that's important, right? When you're gone, what are people gonna say about you? What are the stories people are gonna tell about you? The lives that you've impacted, like Les Brown, he's a, he's, he's a GOAT, he's a legend, a living legend. And when he dies, he's gonna have people like me and LaMondre and all of his other protégés walking this planet, still keeping, keeping his name alive years and years after he's gone because he made an impact. And so you never know, I, I did a video about this the other day, you never know uh, by just waking up and showing up for life, the impact that you can make on somebody else's life. And so when people ask me, Jose, if you could do it all over again, would you change anything? I'm like, absolutely not, man. You know what? Because this SMA was given to me, number one, because God only gives his toughest challenges to his strongest warriors. And number two, I know how to turn, I, I learned how to turn my, my, uh, my adversities into my advantage. And when mm. you can do that, again, it's all, about a part, it's, all a, it's all a part about flipping that switch. When you can learn how to use what may seem like a hindrance to you, what may seem like a challenge to you and turn that negative into a positive, you start to activate certain, uh, 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 certain things in your life that normally wouldn't be activated if you weren't, if you weren't willing to, to, to go into that direction. So listen, 
whether it's one or one billion lives that you get to impact, it's a job well done. And so I'll do it over and over again. So I'm just saying that because I want to encourage you that it doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what your circumstance is. As long as you make that decision today that you're not going to let your condition become your conclusion, the rest is history, baby. Mm. Mm, I love that. Don't allow your condition to become your conclusion. He is Jose Flores, the mindset disruptor. And uh, I tell you, this was this was a very powerful conversation with a lot of depth and insight. And it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what belief system you arrived with. But what does matter is when that fl switch is flipped and you see something different. And Jose, you helped us today to see something different and realize that there is the potential for that switch to flip and that your struggle does not have to become your standard. And it certainly doesn't have to become your place in life. So, man, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you so much. you certainly you know have. What I wanted to do, Lamandre? I wanted yeah, to bro. do something special for you, too, because yeah. I, I'm on, I, it's one of the chapters in my book. It's chapter seven. Uh, I'm sorry, it's chapter six, The Power of Showing Up. Yes, and sir. because of all of you showed up today to listen to this broadcast and to this podcast, I want to give you a free gift. No strings attached. All you have to do is go to freegift.joseinspires.com freegift.joseinspires.com and it's just a motivational uh, mp3 audio that you can download on the power of showing up and some of the things that can happen and change your life and the, traje and the trajectory of your life by showing up because if you don't show up I can guarantee you what's going to happen nothing but mm. if you do show up the opportunities and the possibilities are unlimited see look at it you didn't know you was going to come to my big full authentic life and get free stuff that's lovely, man. And, and and stuff that's powerful, stuff that will make a difference in your life. Jose, man, I appreciate you so much, my brother. And thank you. Thank you uh, for, for being a part of it and sharing your story. I promise you that this has helped someone to make a decision to flip the switch and do something different, man. So thank you so much, brother, man. You you keep doing what you do, man. You you keep you keep reaching. I'm gonna tell you, this goes directly into the segment of growth hacks. It's kind of like that life hacks thing, but really growth hacks is a time where we get to share some insights, some strategies, or even just some inspiration to help you along your path. And it's gonna go right in line with what you talked about today, uh, Jose, man. So thank you so much, man. And, uh, and thank you for the gift. Thank you for the I'm gift, man. You, man. Thank you so much for having me, man. Keep on smiling big, brother, and keep on grabbing life big, and keep doing your thing as well, man. I'm proud of you, man. Likewise, my brother. Thank you. So, Jose, uh, Jose's story is, is, is just amazing, and the fact that, that he shared so deeply and so intimately about his experience, even in the dark place, because I'll tell you, as men especially, a lot of times, we don't want to talk about the challenges. We don't want to talk about the feelings. We don't want to talk about being vulnerable in certain areas, but there is a time to do so. And today's growth hack really speaks about that. It speaks about the time to rise and shine. So here is today's growth hacks. It's time to rise up. It is time to unleash your true potential to embark on a journey towards fulfilling your purpose and making a positive impact in the world. But you know that this path is not easy. There will be obstacles, there will be struggles and reasons to stay in your comfort zone. However, the world needs you to rise above the challenges, to go after what you truly desire. I mean, I want you to think about this for a moment. There will always be resistance. There will always be an excuse not to move forward, but it's time to break free from that mindset and take action. It's time to get up and go after what you truly want, what you were meant to do. The world is waiting for you to unleash your full potential to make a difference. So what are you waiting for? Get up, shake off the dust, 
and take the first step towards your purpose. You see, you have the power, the courage, and the strength within you to make it happen. So don't let fear, doubt, and insecurity hold you back. You are capable of accomplishing great things. So remember, every journey begins with a single step. So get up and go get it. And let your purpose shine through. The world needs you to rise and to shine, to bring your unique talents, skills, and gifts to the table. So don't hold back. Take the leap of faith and go after what you truly want. Listen, the world needs you to do that. Rise and shine. You got this. So that is today's growth hacks. And I hope that 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 it encouraged you as much as, as it encouraged me, because I'm telling you, even when I do those, I'm really speaking to myself. That's the God honest truth. I'm talking to me. And so I want to thank you for joining me today on my big, full, authentic life. This is the show that's all about the journey. And the ultimate goal is to encourage you, to inspire you, and to help arm you with the tools you need on your journey so that you can live that big, full, authentic life on purpose. I am Lamont Dre Pugh, and we're doing just that, living a big, full, authentic life on purpose. And I am so glad that you chose to take this journey with me. Until next time, we'll catch you then.